McDonald, the doctor can see you now. And thank you, nurse. I hope I'm not taking up anybody else's time. A monkey's. <laughs> <laughs> Nelson would have given you a warmer welcome if you had a cold in the head. Hmm. What disease is your friend here suffering from? It's not a disease, Mac. He's dying of a cure. Kennedy's rejuvenating tablets. Grandpa's had a three months course of treatments. He's about through. I uh, see. Well, you could have foreseen that. You are a doctor. You know what radium is good for. You know what harm it can do. Why kill a poor monkey? Why? Because we want to stop Kennedy from killing humans. Because people have to be awakened to their danger. Because you have to wake up. Now, wait a minute. I'm wide awake. I know this stuff is dangerous. Then why don't you do something about it? There is a law. You think Kennedy doesn't know the law? Look at his label. There isn't a definite claim on it. Suggested as a treatment for said it contains radium. Well, does it? Yes. That's all the law cares about. But, Mac, use your common sense. The man has to be stopped. He's a potential murderer. Your broadcasts are doing a lot of good. Keep it up. That is not enough. We have to get to him. Uh, try it. Well, you get him into your office, and I will. Well, this is the stuff, eh? Radium rejuvenating tablets. Exhibit A. One of my products. I identify and admit it. So what? Plenty. Another one of your warnings, I take it. Kennedy, you no doubt have heard Dr. Lawrence Baxter broadcast. So, you're the young medic who is determined to put me out of business. This is a pleasure. Thank you. He has something to say to you. I prefer to listen to him on the radio. I can always turn him off. I think you'll listen to this, Kennedy. Mind if I sit down? Perhaps you'd better. Kennedy, I've been declaring over the air that this rejuvenator of yours is just the opposite. It's a destroyer of health. <laughs> Maybe you'll stop smiling when I tell you that I have positive proof of what I've been saying. Now, Dr. Baxter. Positive proof, you understand? That stuff caused a death. Death? For the past three months, I've been feeding it to a chimpanzee. It died last night. <laughs> oh, you're, you're a monkey. From the way you acted, I thought it might be a near relative. Or maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> now, just a moment, please. I am strictly within the law, and you know it. This medicine is... Uh, Harmful, dangerous, fatal to a monkey. If it can kill a monkey, it can kill a human. My dear Dr. Baxter, this remedy brings in a thousand testimonials a month. What do you say to that? Do you think I don't know how testimonials are bought? My dear boy, I assure you they were genuine, unsolicited, and many of them were accompanied by photographs. The next time you think you have to warn me, do so by telephone. My time is valuable. Now, just a moment, Kennedy. From now on, your product is under suspicion. We'll appeal to every reputable drug firm to shut off your supply of radium. That doesn't worry me in the least. Oh, this is yours, isn't it? Oh, uh, what are you getting out of your radio racket, Doctor? I imagine you're taking very good care of yourself. Good day, gentlemen. That rotten... Oh, take it easy, Larry. What he says is right. The law has no teeth. There's nothing we can do. No, nothing we can do. Unless against his thousand phony testimonials, we can find one. One person who's been hurt by taking his cure-all. If I can prove that that radium rejuvenator is as harmful to human beings as it is to monkeys... My subject today is Kennedy's radium rejuvenating tablets. I have conducted exhaustive experiments with this dangerous drug to ascertain its harmfulness. The results of my test prove it to be a menace to the lives of the public. Mr. Kennedy is acting within the letter of the law in distributing his radium medicine. He sure has it, boy. Why don't you let me take care of him? Act like grown people, Burke. He's hurting our business. <laughs> My business can hold out longer than he can. I am not attacking druggists and the makers of proprietary medicines in general. I'm talking about the exception. Radium rejuvenator is the most dangerous of these. It claims to be the fountain of youth in capsule form. On the contrary, my friends, it ages you prematurely. It destroys vital organs and nerve fibers. 
If you have been taking any of these medicines for any length of time and recognize the symptoms I have described, then you are a victim of radium poisoning, and I urge you to consult your physician at once. Get my lawyer. Yes? Yes? Station W-H-E-L. All right, Kennedy, I'll take care of it at once. Get me the manager of W-H-E-L. I am not soliciting patients. I will treat any sufferers from radium poisoning at my own expense. I intend to broadcast this appeal every time I speak over the radio. All right, Dr. Baxter. Thanks. Send Dr. Baxter to my office. Yes, sir. Mr. Goldman would like right, to see you. Right. Dr. Baxter. Yes? May I speak to you? Well, just a moment, please. How was it, Mr. Golden? Oh, Dr. Baxter, I'm very sorry, but I am going to have to cancel your broadcast. Why? Well, you see, this station is run on a commercial basis. And somebody bought my time. Oh, I'm so glad you understand. They offered three times the amount you were paying for a period of 26 weeks. Well, if it's just a question of a different hour, that doesn't... Well, I'm sorry, but that is the only available time we had. Oh, I see. They really didn't want my time. They just didn't want me to have any time. Wasn't a man by the name of Kennedy by any chance, was oh, it? Oh, no, Doctor, uh, no, really, it's music. A Hawaiian orchestra, pineapple, I see. you know. Never mind, never mind. Dr. Baxter. Oh, yes, yes, I'm sorry, I was... I'm Jean Sterling. I suppose you've heard of my father, Professor Rexford Sterling. Yes, yes, of course. I... His work is somewhat similar to yours. He's publishing this monthly bulletin. Its purpose is identical with yours. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll take it for a year. <laughs> but really, I'm not soliciting, Dr. Baxter. I'll, uh, I'll have my nurse send you a check. But you're not listening to me. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss... Uh... Sterling, Jean Sterling. And this is Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> yes, uh, what, what is it you really want? My father would like to talk to you. In fact, he'd like to sponsor you over a larger station where you could reach a greater audience, a daily program. Well, when can I see him? Why not now? Why not? Yeah. Hello, Jimmy, Dad in? Mm-hmm. Hello, Dad. Hello, Jim. I brought Dr. Baxter. This is an honor, Doctor. I have the greatest admiration for your work. Hello. Yes, this is the office of your good health. What? Certainly not. There isn't enough money in the United States Treasury to make Baxter. a stop. What? Absolutely not. And the analysis will be printed as is. I'm sorry, Doctor. But I dare say you've had the same sort of experience yourself. Very often. Bribes and when they fail, threats. That's inevitable when you tread on the toes of profit makers especially in behalf of the defenseless, as you were doing. Oh, your broadcasts have made a deep impression on me. Thank you, Professor. I asked you to come here today to see if we couldn't join forces. Would you be interested? Well, of course. Uh, your daughter spoke of something that... Uh, an hour on the air, sponsored by the magazine. Do you mean this? Of course he does. That's why I came to the station. Well, I can't tell you how grateful I am. Well, perhaps you won't be when I talk about your fee. Oh, fee be hanged. I, there won't be any fee. I'll do it just because I... Because you believe in what you're doing. Oh, nonsense. I'll do it just because I... I uh... Well, never mind. Uh, do you mind if I use your phone? I haven't called the office in hours. Pardon me. Not at all. Yes, doctor. Yes, you have a little present from Mr. Kennedy, a baby, monkey. The tag says, a new little cousin to ease the pain of your loss. There's an old man waiting to see you. He says he came in response to your radio appeal and he wa- Well, hold him there, I'll be over in about 10 minutes. You will excuse me, won't you? We can talk about the details later. Miss Sterling. Three. That's fine. Now, just sit over here for me, will you? Now, 
Now then, cross your legs, Bobby. Now cross the other leg. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of work do you do? I sell newspaper. 28-year newspaper. Same corner. Mm -hmm. Did you ever work in a paint shop or a watch dial factory? No. In a match factory? I tell you, I sell newspaper. All right, all right. Now, why did you decide to buy that medicine? I want to go back to old country. I not see old country in long time. Old folks. You wanted to look younger. Yeah, yeah. So I buy make you young pills. How long have you been taking them? Oh, long time. Uh, maybe six months. And? It not make me young. It make me more old. Make me feel just like you say on radio. Hurt here, hurt there, uh, fresh air, not come through. I see. Well, you may get dressed now. Nelson, get me a private ambulance. Phone Inspector McDonald and tell him to meet me at the hospital. You'll be all right, Pete. You'll get the best of care. You'll get everything you need. But money, doctor. Don't you worry about it. I'm taking care of everything. Oh, you good heart, doctor. You bless God. Oh, forget it. Excuse. God bless you. Well, Larry? All the symptoms of an advanced case of radium poisoning. The poor devil. Will he, uh... I can't tell yet. Mac, I'm positive that he got that way from taking Kennedy's pills. But the case would be thrown out of court if Kennedy could prove that my patient ever worked anywhere near radium. Check on him, will you, Mac? Will I? These cases are slow to develop. Maybe a week before I can tell his condition. Keep up the good work, Larry. I'll be seeing you. Your Good Health magazine wishes to thank you for the countless telephone calls, letters, and telegrams we have received in response to our first broadcast. We take great pleasure in again presenting Dr. Lawrence Baxter. Thank you, and good afternoon. I'm going to devote today's broadcast to a certain radiumized cough remedy. The advertisements say that it is just the thing for ailing children. An analysis of Swain's cough remedy shows it to contain enough radium to be dangerous to a hearty man, let alone an ailing child. What a fine nerve you've got, trying to shake me down and call it advertising. Why, well, that blasty your young doctor friend will cost me hundreds of cancellations. You see, Mr. Swain, you made a terrible mistake when you advertised that physicians recommended your medicine. Now, um, if you were a client of ours... Oh, if I do advertise, you'll forget about the analysis? And, uh, shut the doctor up? Ooh, I think that could be arranged. Yes. You win $4,000. Now, take this radium hair root revitalizer. You are led to believe that it will increase the abundance of your hair. <laughs> I'm only sorry that television isn't in every home today. If, instead of words, I could show you the untold miseries brought on by these quack products, you would refrain from buying them. At this very moment, I have a patient in Civic Hospital, a man condemned to die because of radium poisoning. His name is Pete Andorka. He was led to believe that some capsules would restore his waning vitality. I'm now going back to the hospital to see him. This guy is ten times as dangerous as he was now that he's on the air every day. Let me take care of him, will you, Chief? You may be able to catch him at the radio station before I... Sure I can. Wait. What I want you to do is to see that he doesn't get to the hospital in the next hour. Leave it to me. He won't get there in a hurry, and when he does, he'll stay there. 
Get me Thompson. I wish you could do something to save that poor man. I'm afraid it's too late. But he might be the means of saving others. Gene, I'll have to hurry now. Larry. Yes. Take me along. To the hospital? You said if people could only see your patient. Well, he's not a very pleasant sight, Gene. I know, but I've had little share in what you're doing, and I'd like to help some way. Good girl. Hop in. You should have broadcast where you've got Pete. Well, why? He's in the safest place in the world. Overdo it, Thompson. I'll have him out in no time. You should have come to us in the first place. I handled the insurance for these remedies. I did not know insurance. Dr. Baxter, he helped me. Oh, that's where you're wrong. Baxter isn't helping you. He's waiting for you to die. He die? Sure, you die, and he has big case. But we... You, yes. We want to save you. We want you to live so we can give you the best doctors. Many doctors, not just one, but many, the best doctors. Dr. Baxter wants me to die. Now, we're anxious to make good if there's been any mistake about your medicine. In fact, we'll give you a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars? All for mine? Yes, all yours. Now, all you've got to do is to sign this paper which will take you to a uh, good hospital, good doctors who, who save you. Oh, put your squawk and you'll be all right. Driver. I didn't even look. It was you I was worried about. Hey, what's the matter? You moving my patient? Why, he's gone. What? Where's my patient? Discharged, I guess. Superintendent, quick. Yes? Yes, he did. He paid his bill and signed a release. No, an attorney. No right to permit that. He's my patient. All right. Larry, what does it mean? You were right and I was wrong. Thought I had him safe. Outside line. Yes. Hello, Larry. Taken? You mean kidnapped?
Kennedy. <laughs> That's better than a guess. Well, of course I'll try. Right. Well, Jean, you don't see the patient. I'm sorry. You'll have to run along alone. Oh, of course. You must find him. Yes, you're right. Larry. Good luck. Everything's okay. Let's go. I changed my mind. I want to go back to hospital. There, there, now. I want to go back. I want Dr. Baxter, a good doctor. You'll be taken care of here. I want to go. Please help somebody. Lie down. Dr. Baxter. Dr. Baxter. I'm paying you plenty. Nobody's to see this man. Any luck? No. I checked with every private ambulance and hospital in the vicinity. But I haven't given up hope yet. Oh, what's the use? I was a first-class chump, all right. I talk too much. Oh, you're a bigger chump than you think you are. Look at these. When you told me about them, I figured they were too good to be true, so I checked on them through the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And the girl? Nothing on her, officially. Well, what's the racket? It's a variation of the shakedown. You blast a patent medicine over the air, and they promise the manufacturer immunity from your attacks in return for advertising in the magazine. Simple. I see. I was sucker number one. Well, you're lucky to find it out when you did. Another month, you'd have been working for Kennedy himself. And that's exactly what I intend to do. I didn't know how contemptible we were. Well, I do now, and I'm the worst of the lot of us. You've done nothing, dear. I brought him here, didn't I? I've covered you all the way, haven't I? I've lied and tricked and cheated. Now, Jean, I, I don't want to be harsh with you. We haven't hurt him at all. We've kept our promise, given him his chance on the air. We've never interfered with him. No, you've just used him to prepare your victims. Victims? Hmm. All right, listen to this. You're going to check out of this racket voluntarily, or I'll tell Larry the whole setup. <laughs> Sit down and keep quiet. Well, I've got a cold. You've always got a cold. Well, Dad? Larry, uh, I mean, Larry's work means an awful lot to you, doesn't it? Yes. That's too bad. We'll help, won't we, and quit thinking about ourselves. Is that what would make you happy? Well, of course. We'll turn to the right. Turn to the right? You don't mean... Oh. That's right, Jimmy. You take care of your cold. Hello, Jean. How's the knee? Oh, it's fine. That's good. Hey, Doc. Yes, Jimmy. What's good for us? Your gun's empty. Well, I, I better... Yes, I think you'd better. Hello, Professor. Dr. Baxter, we were just discussing the uh, advisability of reorganizing our activities. That's good. You need to. Yes, we need... What'd you say? When I came here, I thought you were on the up and up. I was just leading up to that, Doctor. Yes, and now I find that you're an outfit of petty chiselers. Well, Doctor, when a man has lived by his wits as long as I have... How much did you collect this week? We took... What'd you say? I said, how much was the take this week? <clears throat> $6,000. Is that all? You're amateurs. Well, we'll change all that. In the meantime, I'll take my 50% in cash. Larry! Well? You don't mean that... I mean that I always look a gift horse in the mouth. Even a pretty one. Skip what I said, Dad. The little girl's on her feet again. Coming up for the second round. Well, Professor, you have my terms. Reorganization is what you wanted, and no more of this penny-ante business. Of course not. I'm going to be in complete charge. I'll tell you who, why, and when to shake down the clients. 
Now, our first customer that we're going after is our old friend, Mr. Kennedy. We're going after him in a big way. Kennedy? Why, certainly. Haven't I softened him up for a sleigh ride? I think Mr. Kennedy will be ready to listen to reason by the time we get ready for him. Oh, and Gene, you can help. Just give him the old come on, the same as you gave me. Oh, uh, of course, of course, my boy. Whatever you think. Hmm. I've prepared a new list of victims, so oh, I mean uh, products that need your immediate analysis. Now, number one is old Dr. Did you ask him to come here? No. Well, Doctor, this is a surprise. But quite a pleasant one. All the partners are here. You know, Doc, I thought I knew all the angles, but you certainly have dusted off a brand new one. You're not wanted here, Kennedy. Get out. <laughs> That's a great act, Doc. But it's all right. You're among friends. Hello. Yes? This is your good health. What? No, sir. There isn't enough money in the United States Treasury to stop us from public... <laughs> Just a moment. You gentlemen don't know Mr. Swain, do you? Oh, I took him. <clears throat> Only his cough, sir. It's been very profitable to you and your partners. $4,000 for a quarter column ad. I see. Oh, have you the canceled check, Mr. Swain? Oh, yes. Yes, this is it. Mr. Swain is a member of my syndicate. Same as some of the others you've been paying attention to. I need your services as much as Mr. Swain does. I could use a man like you, Doc. Well, maybe I wouldn't care to go with you, Kennedy. I... Now, Doctor, I wouldn't think of sending this check to the American Medical Association. It might cost you your license to practice, and then you'd be of no use to me. So I'm keeping it. You'll want some time to think over the many ways in which you may be of service to me. Oh, by the way, come to my restorium tonight. The syndicate's having dinner, and you can meet them all. At 8 o'clock, shall we say? Right. Dinner at 8. We should be expecting you. Good. Oh, Miss Sterling, I believe? Of course, you'll come, too, with the doctor and the professor. Are you sure you can hold a dock in line? As long as we've got this check, there's nothing to worry about. Now we're getting somewhere. So your interest in the dear public was just an act. And a pretty good act. By the way, what was wrong with yours? Invited to a party and not even a smile for the nice man. And I thought you were a doctor. Jean, don't tell me you're coming down with an attack of ethics. Aren't you interested in money? Naturally. Can't you tell that from the company I keep? Pot pie, sir. Bread? Pot pie. Can't you sneak me a steak? Sorry, sir. Brand pot pie. No, no. Why not? Stomach trouble. <coughs> no. Yeah. It was worth all it cost me, doctor, to get you into our syndicate. Thank you. Yes, gentlemen, I think we'll all see a difference in our balance sheets next year. If it happened just in time, my business practically stopped. <laughs> but you can't blame my broadcast for all of it. Oh, no hard feelings, doctor, now that you've seen the light. Yes, I bet. I was a little slow in seeing the light. Uh, wasn't I, Jean? Oh, you make up for your former blindness, I'm sure. Yes, of course. With the doctor's cooperation, we'll soon have the world by the tail. Uh, I'm afraid it's too late for that. Oh, but doctor, it won't take you long to undo any damage you may have done our business. That's not what I mean. I mean, you've let your big chance go, and now... What do you mean, big chance? Listen, fellas, you've got hold of radium, which to the popular mind sounds like a cure for anything that ails you. Mm, I think we've covered the field very thoroughly. I have my car remedy. I have my liniment for burn. There's my hair grower. I have four products out under my own name. Swain has to wait for someone to get a cough before he can sell his medicine. Stauber has to wait for someone to get burned before he can sell his. And our friend down here can only do business with bald-headed men. But not one of you has thought of putting out a product on the market for the one sickness that everybody gets. And not just once or twice in a lifetime, but about twice a year. Excuse me, please. There you are, gentlemen. And there's no sure cure for it. By George Baxter, the common cold. 
What an idea. It's simply genius. It's not an idea. It's an accomplished fact. You mean you have a cold cure? Just that. And what's more, it works. I tested a thousand formula which failed. The thousand and first worked. I didn't realize when we talked this afternoon just what this association might mean. Mean to you. <laughs> <laughs> to both of us. Here. Look at this. They make a radium product similar to mine. But they're not in the syndicate, huh? Oh, that's not it. They can't stand daylight. Bad records. Oh. Push over for the professor. And for you. Well, what's your cut? Not a penny. That's your racket. Well, thanks. Now, how about a little reciprocity? Just how? 1,001. After all, making medicine is my racket. My business. <laughs> <laughs> no, Kennedy, I have a million dollar radio audience. And I'm just about ready to cash in on them. Oh, of course, there'll be a fortune in it for you, but... Why not cut me in on it? Well, simply because I don't see the advantage. I have the public ear, I have the formula. And I have the manufacturing facilities and the capital. But the one thing that's indispensable, you can't supply. What's that? Radium. I'll need more than your whole syndicate uses. I can supply that. All you use. No, no, you forget that I was there when McDonald shut down on you. Forget it. I can get all we need. Then we'll call it a deal? Oh, certainly. <laughs> Yes? Oh, all right. I'll be back in a minute. Mm -hmm. Unless you have a search warrant and the proper officers... Oh, I've got the proper officer and he's got a search warrant. What do you want? Want well, to look over this health factory of yours? See if a man by the name of Pete Andorka is hidden on the premises by any chance. Oh, certainly, gentlemen. This way. This is my laboratory. Don't forget to search the test tubes, Inspector. That incision, my friend, has got 16 stitches. Oh, yeah? Well, wait till I show you where they took a police bullet out of me. Hey, what's going on here? It was just uh, showing our operations. Easy pickings with the compliments of Kennedy. Drug manufacturers with the record. Splendid. I'll pay them a visit in the morning. <laughs> what are you laughing at? At you? Thinking I didn't know my way around? Did you ever stop to consider what this may mean to your career? You get away with it just so long. Long enough to make a lot of money. Then I won't need a career. I suppose you think you're on the right track. Yep, I do. In a way you'd never guess. Your friend Kennedy has visitors who look strangely like the Lord of these old eyes. Pleasure was all mine, Inspector. Now, if you'll call off your Cossacks. The young crusader. I might have known you were playing ball with Kennedy. In all my years in the bureau, I never saw a doctor who turned out as black as this. Oh, that's very dramatic, Mr. McDonald, very. But they pay you to hire Pete and Dorka. Well, if you must know, McDonald, the sum represents about five years of your salary. As a trusted servant of the public. Oh, look out, Hey, just a minute. I'm taking him out for questioning. Any objection? Well, You're not going to let him get away with that, are you? Hold everything, Bert. The doc can take care of himself. <laughs> you know, that was the most welcome sock I ever got. Ooh, you could have pulled it a little, Mac. Well, I had to make it look real. What's this? A list of quacks who can stand a shakedown, but they can't stand the law. Kennedy donated it as a goodwill gesture. I'll have him picked up tomorrow. Thanks, Larry. Pete wasn't in the resort. Not much chance of picking up his trail, my friend. Kennedy's far too smart for that. He's not as smart as he thinks he is. He fell for that cold cure gag, hook, line, and sinker. I'm on the inside, Mac. Uh, you're playing with pretty bad boys, Larry. I just teased his appetite for big money. You promised me a large quantity of radium. Now listen, Mac. If you'd get together with a... You'd think he'd be practical enough to treat patients who could pay their bills. But no. All his appointments are with monkeys, mice, and microphones. And for nothing, mind you. Just because everybody else's business means more than his own. 
There. Is that more comfortable? Oh, that's fine, thanks. Well, I can always go back to nursing. You wouldn't desert him. He's never here to desert. I can't afford to pay the office rent just so there'll be a door with his name on it. <laughs> oh, hello, Jane. Hello. How's the knee? Oh, perfect. It's all right, I fixed it. You know, Nelson, I don't know what I'd do without you. Any calls? Don't be silly. I think the new monkey needs you. You may have a go at her. <laughs> Is, uh, Kennedy ready for a shakedown? Hmm? <laughs> you fooled me yesterday, Larry, but... Well, I'm straightened out again. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what your plan is, but I do know that you're not thinking about 50%. You're thinking about getting on the inside with Kennedy so that... Yes, you're right, Jean. So that I can stop him and his kind once and for all. Oh, I've been a fool. I should never have stopped believing in you. Well, I did a little stopping myself, believing in you. Oh, it was my own fault. But now that... And now what you're going to do is to get away from here, out of town. By tomorrow, they're popping, and I don't want you involved. I want you to get away with your father and Jimmy. But what about you? Don't worry about me. You look after yourself and your father. You can tell him that I've straightened him with McDonald and tell him that he and I are even. He made use of me, but I made better use of him. Now run along. The postal inspectors are picking up bees. That leaves Maxwell and Simonelli. You take Maxwell. Okay. We'll handle Simonelli ourselves. Take a look at that. For three weeks I've been warning you. These mugs are phonies. Can't you see some stools? There's nobody new except you. And them. And the dark. Well, let's have the song and dance. Uh, how'd we know we'd be followed? You wouldn't have been. Don't do that. Shut up. You wouldn't have been if somebody hadn't been tipped off. Pardon me. Could I talk to you for a match? Yes, yes. What? Oh. A friend of mine used to be a patient of yours. A chap named McDonald. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, yes, he told me about you. Stick around. But I tell you, nobody even saw the list you gave me. Yeah, nobody but the doctor. Was that being paid? We were wondering just how much you know about this. Know about it? I did it. What did I tell you? That lets me out. Why, certainly. Can you tell me a better way to cut out competition? We've got our take. Why let them stay in business and cut in on our profits? It sounds like a Keep lot out. of work. I've assigned Andrews to assist you. He's waiting for you in the lab now. That's good. With a few more experiments, I'll have the formula standardized. We'll be in production within 48 hours. Great, Doc. By the way, how did you come out with McDonald? Uh, Kennedy, you know what a grilling is? I do. That's what I got, but he hasn't anything on me. Oh, and do they hurt. I got just the thing for you. Come on over here, I'll fix you right up. Just hold on to this partner and your troubles will soon be over. Well, I don't think there's anything will help fallen in arches, but I'll try it. <laughs> Try to cure him and he almost kills me. Let's get busy, Andrew. Gee, Doc, I, I feel like a deep sea diver in this outfit. Well, if you attempted deep sea diving without the proper outfit, what do you suppose would happen to you? I'd drown. Well, if you work with radium without the necessary equipment, you'll burn. Haven't we uh, given it long enough? Yes, yes, that looks all right. How much longer do we work on this, Doc? Oh, another day? Why? Well, I don't like to work with radium anymore. It gives me the jitters. How long have you been working with Kennedy? See, I, I started in on distribution. How long have you been working with radium? Six years. Why? Six years? Do 
you uh, feel any pain in your arms or legs? No. You're breathing hard? <sighs> no. Why? Andrews, you'd better watch your step. Well, how's it going, Larry? Oh, another day, I think. This is Dr. Baxter. You get me a gram of radium and we're ready to start production. That's why he's here. I uh, didn't get the name. <laughs> I didn't mention it. So we can get all we need. I wonder. I'll get it, and I'll get it tonight. Tonight? Just how? Oh, I didn't mean to disturb your professional pride, Mr. Whatever your name is. I guess you can get it, all right. I guess so. I get it. Good day, gentlemen. Pardon me, sir. Have you met? There's a man with a black hat in Kennedy's laboratory. Don't lose him. He's the one that gets the hot radium. Frank, is it? finds out what Larry's been doing, you can imagine what will happen. Well, I'm going to have to imagine it because I'm not going to be here to find out. The point is, Gene, Larry shattered my faith in human nature when he perpetrated that outrageous hoax on me. And not only that, he misrepresented himself, Doc. Oh, no, stop it. Don't you realize this body's in? We can't leave him here alone. Well, let's take him along with us. I think we got something in that young fella. Jimmy, <clears throat> does it really mean that much to you, dear? I love him, Dad. And if anything should happen to him, There, I... there, there, there. Your father's agile mind has a solution to the problem already. I know just how to get Larry out of all this. Dad. Now you follow these instructions and everything will turn out fine. Doc, I... I've been watching myself last night. My... My breathing is kind of hard and I... I get pains. Well, like you said. Andrews, let me see those fingernails. Uh huh? D do you think? I'm afraid I'm going to have to tell you the truth. Oh, you, you gotta help me. You can't let me suffer like that old... You, you can do something, will you? I just got the information. Yes. That's all I know. They picked him up right after he grabbed the stuff. Certainly, they were waiting for him. They've arrested Butler. Well, you know what that means? It means that your new friend, Dr. Baxter, is a witness. A definite witness that we've bought hot radium before. And the doctor gave the tip. He was the only person who knew. Come on, Burke. People suffering from radium poisoning build up an immunity in their blood. Yeah, sure. And the serum taken from them is your only hope. But we can't get it. I only knew of one case. I know a guy who's got it. If I take it to him, will, will you do it, can you? Well, of course, of course. Hello, boys. Did you get the radium, Kennedy? Well, what's wrong? Plenty. Butler was trapped last night. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Frisky. He ain't making a rut. Well, you don't think that I had it? No, I don't think. I know. I don't suppose your highly scientific imagination could possibly tell you what reward is coming to you. Well, I don't mind that either, Kennedy. We don't care how we get you. Murder charge is as good as anything. You're wrong again. I don't have to kill you to put you out of the way. Why not? Pick up his partners. Wait a minute. You're too late. They left yesterday. Larry. Jean, I thought you left yesterday. I couldn't. I want to talk to you, Larry. Come out in the hall. Well, certainly. Kind of rough, aren't you? Well, I'll be on my way. You'll be on your way. This way. Listen to me, Kennedy. Unless I call my father in ten minutes, he and Jimmy will be down here with the police. Are you... May we leave now? Hi, Emma. 
You keep his trap shut. Didn't you hear me? I'll get your father on the phone. I won't. Will or Larry gets his. You wouldn't dare kill him. All right. And don't get any bright ideas. Dad? Jean? It... It worked. Larry will be over in a few minutes. I can't say any more... That's all. Now you can tie her up, too. Something must have gone wrong. She said everything was all right. But she didn't sound right. I never should have let her go to Kennedy's alone. I think you'll be here till I get back. Come on, I want you two with me. Lock the door. You stay here, you understand? Jean, darling, when we get out of this, will you remind me to propose to you? I will if you remind me to accept. We'll make a swell go of it. about my being sick, are you? Andrews, I'm past the kidding point. You're not getting any better. Every hour counts. Okay. Doctor, give me that transfusion right away. I'll take you to the old guy. Doc, if this is a gag, I'll let you have it. Untie Miss Sterling, too. I'll need her help. Come on, let's go. Wait, we'll need some medicine. Can you get a prescription filled right away? Just write it out, Doc. Send the boy to the lab, quick. Run over to the drugstore with this. Get going. Yes, sir. Rush it, it's urgent. Yes, sir. I'm not going to wait any longer. What are you going to do? Call the police. You can't take a chance like that. Here they are. Where's Jean? What have you done with her? Here, take it easy. I'm a sick man. Come on, both of you. You'll have to wait a moment, son. Thanks. I'll take care of it right away. Get me police headquarters. In a hurry. I'm uh, sorry I have to wait. They have to send out for something. It's all right. Let's go. I saw them. Where? They went away in your car, sir. Andrews? Have you found them? There's only one place they could have gone. Strip of the ways, quick. You take the rest. Now reach for the ceiling, both of you. Larry, he's a sick man. Yeah, he's about as sick as Jimmy. How's Pete? Sleeping. That's fine. Gene, lock that door, will you? Open the door. Gene, get away from that door, quick! Adam, 
daughter. Keep him up. Well, you asked for it. You're going to get it. Let him have it, Burke. Got your covered, Kennedy. Got that prescription just in time, Doc. Too late to follow your car, so I took a chance and followed Kennedy. There's Pete, Mac. Well, that makes our case watertight. Who's this? One of Kennedy's men? Kennedy shot him. Good work, Larry. Breaking up this vicious racket should mean the passage of a law. A law which we all desperately need to protect us from the rest of the Kennedys. I hope so. There should be a reward for what you've done. And here it is. Children, you need never worry about me. I've learned my lesson. From now on, it's the road to the right. I'm so happy, Dad. And this little wedding present, I'm going to send you children my new magazine, The Conservative Investor. Oh, that's sweet. Uh,